Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Mass. Glad you could be here. Because we are wearing masks and there are fewer of us here, please say your parts boldly. Let us stand as we begin. You may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. 
Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to, his, to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve winter baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. I was on vacation for about a week, including last weekend, and this weekend I hear about Jesus himself seeing the need to take time away. And it wasn't a vacation, it was after his cousin John the Baptist had been killed, so it probably wasn't particularly cheerful, but we hear that Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. He saw the need to get away for a while, and he took the opportunity. Today I'm going to speak to you a little bit about wasting time and the value of wasting time and how that relates to self-care. Now a few years ago, I was speaking to an eighth grade class, eighth graders out there, about what's the purpose of life? What's the purpose of life? And I asked them, is it just a study so you can go to the high school that you want to go to and then you can study and work some more so that you can go to the college you want to get the so that you can work some more, so that you can own the house and the car that you want, and just on and on and over and over and over again. Is that what it's about? The answer obviously is no, that simply can't be what life is about. Our work can't be directed so that we can work more. And so I told these eighth graders that the purpose of life was to waste time. To waste time to do things which aren't directed toward any particular goal. And of course, the eighth graders loved this. They thought it was great. So then I told them I wasn't talking about playing video games. I was talking about wasting time with people you love. I recently read a book titled Leisure, The Basis of Culture by Joseph Pieper. And he argues that our Western concept of the weekend and of rest in general has become more to do with taking a break to recharge ourselves so that we will be better able to work. And we've lost the sense of true Sabbath rest. We spend too much time doing nothing for the sake of doing something, trying to recharge, and not nearly enough time simply being purposeful. And there's three different sides to this. Have you ever heard of the acronym JOY? J-O-Y stands for Jesus, Others, Yourself. And it's a good way to orient our lives to understand what's most important. When those three are in that order, Jesus and then others and then ourselves, we truly will experience joy. But ourselves are part of that. Self-care is a necessary part of that equation. And that's a large part of why we have vacation, and it's a large part of why I do a week's vacation, to recharge my batteries so that I can be better at care for others. But notice that purpose that's involved there, that so that. Good self-care is always done so as to be better at caring for others. Notice in the Gospel, 
that when Jesus goes away to have some time for himself, his family follows him, right? They're there on the shore waiting for him to get out of the boat. They need him. They cry out to him for help. And after what probably wasn't as much time away as he wanted, he returns to serving his family. Now, I know all you parents out there have had this experience. You try to have some time for yourself, and then comes back crying, Mom? And without nearly enough time to yourself, you return into that life of serving others. Self-care has that purpose of recharging, which means it is different from simply wasting time. Wasting time is an end in itself. It serves no purpose whatsoever. A really great example of this is having dinner together as a family. Because the purpose isn't really to eat. We could do that more efficiently by ourselves and get back to being productive. Family meals aren't meant to serve a purpose. They're simply a purpose in themselves, spending time with people we love. And another great example of purposelessness, to great word, Microsoft Word said that it was a word of purposelessness. A great example is prayer and worship. What purpose does praying serve? If our basic approach to prayer is asking God for things, we're doing it wrong, and similarly, God doesn't need anything from us. So our goal can't be to give him something. Prayer is simply wasting time with someone we love, God. And this is true in particular, especially with Mass. We come together to worship God. And if our goal when coming to Mass is to get something out of Mass, we're probably doing it wrong. Think about family activities. If our goal in doing something together as a family is to get something from each other, we're turning each other into tools that are useful and treating our relationships as useful when really we should simply be together and give of ourselves. If our approach to Mass is along those lines, what am I getting out of this? We're probably not going to get as much as if we simply approach Mass as wasting time with the God we love and with the church community we love. And there's some irony here because the less we try to get something out of Mass, the more we end up getting out of Mass. But that same thing is true of all of our relationships. The less we try to get something out of them, the more we do end up getting out of them. Our reading from Isaiah today tells us that what is truly important in his life is found simply by coming to God and being with God. And so my approach to vacation this last week was simply to be. To be with good friends, to be with God, to not try to force rest and relaxation, but simply to have time without purpose. Self-care is important, but what's even more important is that we waste time. And very often, wasting time has that added benefit of rest and relaxation. But that can be the goal. The book of Genesis tells us that when God created the world, he established the seventh day as a day of rest. And again, God doesn't need rest or relaxation. He's God. And God certainly didn't need to recharge so as to be able to get back to work. God wasted time. And in doing so, he demonstrated that wasting time is a legitimate and even necessary part of life. And so for homework this week, I'm going to encourage everybody to waste some time without purpose. Waste time with family, waste time with friends, and waste time with God.
Let us stand together and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten without name, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us pray. For wisdom for all those who have to make decisions about reopening, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to racism and all violence, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are unemployed and all those facing financial difficulty, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for people working on a vacation for the coronavirus, that their efforts may be successful. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick or suffering in any way, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers which we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our loving Father, we ask that you hear and answer all of our prayers, which we make through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna. 
Hosanna in the highest Blessed is he who comes In the name of the Lord Hosanna, Hosanna Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. Uh...
Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace, grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. be filled here at this table, food for all who hunger, and drink for all who thirst, drink of his love, wine of salvation, you shall live forever. In Jesus Christ the Lord. You who labor for justice, you who labor for peace, you who steady the plow in the field of the Lord. Come be filled here at this table, food for all who hunger, and drink for all who thirst, drink of his love, wine 
sign of salvation. You shall live forever in Jesus Christ the Lord. You with light full of pain, you who sorrow and weep, you beloved of Christ, come to Him, come to Him, come and be filled here at this table, food for all who hunger and drink for all who thirst. My friends, please join me in our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. so worthy of trust. God's mercy falls on the just and the right. Full of God's love is the earth. Rain down, rain down, rain down your love on your people. Rain down, rain down, rain down your 